So if you could identify something that doesn't exist, you don't have all the things in front of you in order to break down, like I'm doing the same thing somebody else does, I just have to do it better than them. The trick to that is it has to find the right market for it in the first place. But if you could do one of those two things, you get really, really good at something and can convince others that you're good at something, that's a great path to success. Yeah. Or to do something that people want and that they don't currently have, that's the other way. I'll say two things about that. One is, I was lucky enough to be born into it, right? I was born at the right time when things weren't invented yet. Only one out of every five families had a home PC when I came mm -hmm. out of college. So we had the ability to build all the first things for everything. There was no online scoreboards. <laughs> so we had to invent them. And we invented them from things in the real world, from the newspaper, from television. And we just grabbed those things and put them online. I'll say something else. Doing it better than everyone else isn't always necessary. You can make a lot of money being second. Being second best is just fine. We were behind ESPN the whole way at CBS Sports. We took fantasy and went bigger faster because we decided to go with the niche. We attacked sports betting first, um, but that yeah. didn't work. Only 6% of Americans were, were wagering at that time and 11% were playing fantasy. So we were like, all right, well, we're gonna attach fantasy onto fantasy because it has no legal issues and we can run with it, right? Being second is fine, you know? I mean, some would say that cbssports.com staying like that ended up second or third or fourth now, but they're still profitable and doing well. You don't have to have the best product. You just have to have brand loyalty, which comes with people using your product in fantasy and sports betting over and over again. <laughs>